Drake is back mm. with a hundred gigs part two. Okay. Another three pack. Uh, last week we spoke about uh, the other three records that placed on Billboard and how well they did. This week he surprised us again and he's uploading everything up to this hard drive link in his uh, Finsta bio, which is Plots Twist. <laughs> he really spells it like that. There's like a thousand T's and a yeah. thousand T's everywhere. It's a little spicy. Yeah, a little spicy. New three pack. And um, I like it a lot. Mm. I like it a lot. Uh, a part of the three pack is the SOD joint, which is the song that he got into it about. Well, not really him, more maybe more so Yachty because he made it a, a podcast appearance and spoke about it. Uh, the song with Mr. Hotspot, where Hotspot essentially just wanted a clean version of the record that both Drake and Yachty got on, which is SOD Super Soap. On this new version that's on that three pack, there is no little Yachty. There is just Drake on that mm-hmm. record. And I, I, I got to say, man, uh, my favorite record on this three-pack, Sarkadian Rhythm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we heard Kendrick Lamar reference that uh, in the beef when they were going back and forth. I think that was like 616 in LA or so. If I'm wrong, please correct me. I'm sorry. But what I will say is I can definitely confirm to myself that yeah, he's definitely been trying to get feelers out of us. Mm-hmm. Right? When I think maybe how he saw how those last three songs went, he goes, you know what? What 2 Chainz said with LeBron shit, I'm going to give him a deluxe. Give him another one. That's what LeBron said about 2 Chainz. Oh, my fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't think, man. yeah, I got you. You my man. That's why I fuck with you. <laughs> gave him three more. But I wish he would have came out the gate with these with this? three. Yeah. No bullshit. Imagine... Imagine if Drake took like a quick hiatus after the whole beef. Mm-hmm. When I say quick hiatus, I mean month and a half, two months tops. Mm-hmm. And he start with that. Mm-hmm. Where he's shooting at everybody. Right? My whole beef when he was going back with Kendrick Lamar was, yo, this ain't the time to be shooting at other people or worried mm-hmm. about other artists who don't like you. You got to mm-hmm. kill on the other side of that, on that, on that road. You Let's focus. That. Let's you focus right that. now. Yep, yep. This is the time. Where, where the dust settles a little bit. There's been time for people to process and miss you and think. Granted, he could do whatever he wants. Mm-hmm. He essentially has an entire documentary out, right? If you yeah. piece all of the clips and footage that he's released on 100 gigs. For sure. But if he would have just took two months off. And came back with this. And came back with this. I, don't, I think most people don't have a problem with it. Now, I'll tell you what I don't like on this. Savon, don't forget what she was going to say because I knew he was about to say something. Only thing I don't like on this three pack is the second verse of SOD. Uh, SOD was originally recorded in 2021. So you can hear how he just took Yachty's verse off and just gave us a pretty lax uh, mm-hmm. uh, performance on that second verse. Uh, also, No Face, I get it, which is the one you just played. Sounds like a Playboy Cardi type beat. It's kind of new school. Kind of sounds like Savon's grungy. not grungy. Savon's not gonna know this name. Like a Ken Carson type beat. Oh, don't I know. Have no idea mm-hmm. what that gotcha. is. Gotcha. He's 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 in Playboy Cardi's Shout camp. out to Ken. Yeah, and I think that was a great way of <laughs> showcasing how Drake can rap mm-hmm. with like new style sound. Wait, okay. Alex. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you saying Drake should have taken like a month or a month and a half off and dropped his three pack and dropped the three pack? Is, is you think that's your hindsight speaking? Yes, absolutely. I feel okay. like I can only speak from my hindsight because that's what we were, we're dealing with. Because at the time, yeah. would you have said the same thing? Yes, because mm-hmm. on the first three pack, just last week, I told you how they charted. Nothing mm-hmm. was inside of the top 20 on Billboard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. True. This is Drake we're talking this about. This is Drake we're talking about with features from 21 Savage, Young Thug, Lotto. They didn't even chart inside the 20. Mm-hmm. This three... Now, I don't think these are like perfect songs or anything mm-hmm. like that, but these are very strong. They're good. These are, these are strong. And they're not on DSPs. Well, yet. Not on DSPs I'm, yet. I'm, I'm going to s- recording. I'm going to speak for the community who thrives in convenience. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is if I can't open up Apple Music or Spotify and listen to it, it's probably not going to connect with me <laughs> in, in a certain way that it should. I did hear these songs. I heard snippets and they kind of came and they went. Um, I think once I have the accessibility to listen to them, then maybe I can give you a better idea, a like better, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, once yeah. it's in actually in my phone, I'll go tap back in. Right. Nothing sounds horrible, but I think the thing in, in the gift and the curse of being Drake is nothing he puts out is going to sound horrible, right? Yeah, We're nah. only going to be able to compare Drake to Drake at this point. 
is just like LeBron James. We can only compare LeBron James to pretty much LeBron James in today's NBA. Um, so when, when I hear these songs and when I've heard these songs, they all sound good. And everything that Drake has put out from the Camille Cabela feature, from the Sexy Red the Gordo to joints. the Gordo, everything he has put out has sounded good. Right, I don't want to take that away from him. Like, nothing has a sound. Like, terrible. Not bad. Nothing yeah, sounds yeah, yeah, yeah. bad yeah. that Drake has put out virtually ever, yeah. which is why he is Drake. The problem is the arena that you were in. You were trying to dance outside of it, right? I saw somebody tweet the other day. Kendrick Lamar has actually impacted how I listen to Drake. I saw that tweet, and that is how. Some of us, not all of us, because there's some mm -hmm. people who disregard anything that Kendrick yeah. said, mm -hmm. anything that Kendrick did. Mm -hmm. Some people think the battle was just for shits and gigs and they mm -hmm. kept pushing. Mm -hmm. There's other people like myself, and I'm only speaking to the people because there's this narrative on social media that I hate Drake. <laughs> Me too. There's a narrative that I it's hate crazy. Drake. There's a narrative that like, and I get, get it, whatever that. the case may be. But the issue that I have or the observation mm -hmm. that I have with the whole Drake and Kendrick thing stems from this was a rap, a hip hop battle. Yeah. Now I'm going to refer to uh, the Joe Budden podcast on this. Um, one of the podcasts who gets a LL Cool J and a Styles Talk P the within the same week. Right. I listen and I watch those episodes. And when I hear Styles P talk, it reminds me of why I fell in love with rap. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of why I love hip hop, the competitiveness of it, the art of it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. They're like, he refers to a certain caliber of MCs as Jedis. Mm -hmm. And what Styles P says is only Jedis could talk to other Jedis. Jedis for sure. You know, like we're in a different class. Yes, we all make music, mm -hmm. but we all don't speak the same language. Mm -hmm. We all ain't making the same shit. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a battle, that is how I expect you to show up. As a quote unquote Jedi, right. which a lot of people question Drake to be, but we know Kendrick is. Mm -hmm. And so everything that Drake has done after the Kendrick thing, and I don't understand or I don't expect everybody to understand or be able to digest what a Jedi is. Right. Right. I think some people just see people for who they are as an artist and, and as numbers. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain level to this, this, this hip hop shit, this rap shit, this battle shit that we appreciate. And has built the culture. I agree. And that is the issue that a lot of us have with Drake is that you just didn't respect that aspect of this. Yes, you're great. Yes, you're always going to be able to make hits and all that shit. Nobody's taking that from you. But when it comes to being a competitor, when it comes to being a quote unquote Jedi, as the great Styles P likes to refer to those elite MCs and lyricists, you fell short. And that's it. And that's it. To that tweet that you just brought up. Right. And that was a great point you just made. Right. That's, could you read that tweet for me one more time? For sure. The tweet says, Kendrick Lamar has actually impacted how I listen to Drake. Now, when I first saw that tweet, I will be honest, I thought it was dick riding at first. <laughs> I go say it. Like, and you were like, oh, brother. Uh, yeah, I was like, another nigga done changed the way how you consume music. What the fuck? Then I sat with the tweet for a little bit. And I, I understood it a little bit more. Only because when you get the breakdowns on Not Like Us, where Kendrick was breaking down how Drake went to Atlanta, right? When he's doing the breakdowns of, hey, y'all, this dude looks like he has an identity crisis. As a listener now, you're hearing somebody that is so powerful with his pen and being Kendrick Lamar and so true to himself now, where it's like, all right, though the war has passed, as you listen to Drake's music now, we only compare Drake to Drake but you can't help to think about the things that were mentioned yeah. in that riff. Like a, like a, damn, <laughs> was he right? Yeah, type of thing. Exactly, type of thing. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie. First yeah. of all, I'm like, yo, you dick riding, bro. Like, what the fuck? And that's another thing, too, to Savon's point. Mm -hmm. There are people that think this is a We Hate Drake podcast. We don't. It's we, not. It's really not. If anything, we were really just given how we felt on that. And during that uh, riff, Savon was talking about having his cape for Drake. OVO yeah. cape. I came in here, even though I was a big advocate for Kendrick's music during the beef. But when he did this, the concert and he had Dr. Dre up there and he over here talking about how people in Drake's camp have funny cases, I came up on this podcast and what I said, that looks a little funny, Kenny. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're going to call it straight. We're going to call it tall. But there's a way to, there's a way to digest an artist without necessarily, uh, what's the word for it? 
like giving in to general thought. Like letting other things influence? Yeah, yeah. Your but view with, on them? Yeah, but with this, I could see how people actually got mm -hmm. affected. I, I mean, Kendrick did read Drake to filth a little bit, <laughs> yeah. and that's why people say that Kendrick won the battle. Yeah, no bullshit. Reggie, you, do you mind reading that? Because that kind of speaks exactly to what it is that you're talking to. The tweet or the screenshots oh, or everything? It, the whole thing. So there's a tweet from Andres Wrights. It says, it's almost as if Kendrick Lamar rebuttaled this new Drake song, No Face, in advance on Meet the Grams. So no, in No Face, Drake says, my therapist put a 30-day notice because I keep on talking about beefing and business and money and women. It's no diagnosis. Yeah. And then on Meet the Grams, which was a while ago, uh, uh, over a month ago, Kendrick Lamar says, therapy's a lovely start, but I suggest some ayahuasca. Strip the ego from the bottom. Like that's maniacal. Oh shit! If so, <laughs> like if somebody tells me they got a, they got changed off of Drake's perception because of Kendrick, I feel him. That's that's, it. that's maniacal. <laughs> I that's, feel him. No, that's maniacal. It is. And the it's, nigga, they, come on. It's things like that. When that's you're, maniacal. When, How could you wait, not big Kendrick just, up in there? When you're a Jedi. You just yes. showed me the tweet and I'm just like. You fucked your head up. <laughs> when you're, a, when you're not one of those, riding? you don't step into the trap like that. Yeah. You don't walk into the trap like that when you're yeah. one of those. And again, maybe he's not one of those and that's cool because he. I think he makes some of the best music that we've ever had. That's never going to change. it's two different arenas and I don't think, again, you can't, you, you have to be able to separate the two right. if you really grew up in a certain era and time of hip hop right. and you understand the history of hip hop and the competitiveness of hip hop like you have to like it's not about who you like more who you like I don't give a fuck about either one of these guys mm -hmm. no, I we don't, don't know these niggas they, I don't know them we don't know these niggas I wish them happy we just healthy lives and, <laughs> yeah, and raise their children to be great people yeah. but when it comes to the art which when you put your art out there right we record a podcast every single week we put social clips out there we put this podcast these episodes out there and then whatever people say about me I have to take it y'all say I got a funny mustache Stash, cool. What I'm supposed to that's do? What they, say? they say my beard don't connect. That's great. It don't. What I, the I fuck? No, that shit connecting like LTE, I my get, friend. Like it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. That was good. That was good. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, Once yeah. I press play yeah. and record on these cameras and these microphones and I put it out for the world, I embrace all that comes with it. So for anybody who says anything disparaging against your favorite artist, it comes with it, nigga. Get off they dick. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nah, get in your bag, real talk. Well, something for the Drake fans. Yeah. Just, you know, to end this on a on a Drakey note. So when Alex introduced this topic, he was kind of like saying, Oh, now that the dust has settled a little bit, this is what I wish Drake would have came out with with his comeback songs. Yeah. And didn't Drake post on his Instagram story a clip of Rashid Wallace mm -hmm. saying, like, yo, we're gonna we're win gonna win game, game two. two. Game two. Yeah. What do we think? Like, is this even a possibility? You I'm or glad what? you just like, I'm glad you just brought that up, Reggie, because there are rumors circulating that Kendrick Lamar is on the way. Oh, because Big Sean is dropping. You I, got it. I wouldn't be surprised if they dropped the same Wait, part two. <laughs> you seen the nigga? No, I thought there was there was rumors that Kendrick is kind of not gonna drop anything anymore. That we thought he was gonna. Wait, new, which one is? Well, they, got, they got some new stuff circulating, Reggie. Okay, okay, that. Yeah. The people in his team are paying for certain advertising, paying for certain things, you know, in preparation of a rollout. Again, Wait, we please. could be yeah, yeah, we could be wrong, but this would be another prime time for him to drop. I would love that because I, I want I want the rap beef to keep going. Honestly, like I find it, I, <laughs> I, I, it's, it's yeah. beautiful, but. You like Please? that beef shit. No, no, no. <laughs> Rap beef. Rap beef. Uh, and hot dogs. <laughs> Glizzies. <laughs> Nathan's. Um, so, no, I, I do want this to continue, but yeah. please, Kendrick... Just give Big Sean a break. <laughs> Do not drop Reggie, please. on August. What is it? What is this Friday? I think it's 30th or some this shit. Friday. Oh, it, uh, please do not, Kendrick Lamar, please do not drop on August 30th. Please just give Big Sean a, just, just let him have this one. He got COVID. Please. I'm being so serious. Like, he was I just, crying. I don't know about you guys, but I, <sighs> I want Big Sean to win. No, like, me too. I he really won. do. And what? Yeah. Now it's over. What he won? What did he, he win? He won his life. Yeah. He got Janae. But but he ain't he don't think that. He was all good music. He don't think that. He does. <laughs> he won. He got a U. He ain't think he won. You ain't hear him. They got shit to work <laughs> he on. He got a hairline. <laughs> he, he, has a great, he has a great like, hairline. He won. This, this nigga's strong. great. <laughs> and a beard. And I don't know. No, him winning. This album means a yeah. lot to him. He hasn't dropped in years. And for him to have a successful rollout, that will make me so happy. Damn, yeah. that's good. I, I can see it. I, I can want, see it happening I right want now. him to. Oh. Is it? Imagine Kendrick drops on Friday. Oh, my God. 